All right. So this alien is something you've seen at previous debugs. I've been working on it a little bit over the years. And you can start to see some of the progress. I reduced this pod piece at the request of internet feedback. What is that enormous nonsense? Um, you can this is sort of where the total model is at right now. And if you turn on simplify, so you hide all the various subdivision modifiers. Turn. He looks cooler this way, I think. What do you guys think? Do you think it should be like hard plates or like you know sort of soft like motorcycle leather strips? I, I think it would, should be hard plates. A, a little bit of a. Oh. Especially since you're going Depends with the on what's down in the pit, right? Yeah. You should try and do it both ways and try and save everybody. <laughs> it depends also on what you're doing. Actually, the final artifact is, right? Are you doing this for like motion or trying to make a form of a little asset? Uh, I want it to be a, like basically, so my sort of production <laughs> goal here is to make a character who sort of fits in next-gen console ideas of what what you can do with a character, uh -huh. how heavy you can make them, so on and so forth. Yeah, because so sometimes, sometimes you're big in normals, you have to be careful about your, uh, your creases because you can't have them super sharp because they won't yeah. that nicely. So See, uh, it's better to have one, uh, more space. Yeah. Uh, cycles actually support space. So like you can see the faces that I'm at right now is just under 25,000 uh, Mass Effect characters. Uh, the main character was allowed like 30,000 with his gun and everything. So I figure he's like, he still needs an accessory over here, so not quite there. Oh yeah, and he still needs feet, feet faces. Um, and yeah, I wanted to give I wanted to talk about retopology a little bit. So that's how I made his face. And you can see his head model. Oh yeah, there's also uh poly strips. Yeah. Have you played I have not used poly strips yet. Is it is there a free version yet? You can get it for free. It is open source. Huh? But you can also pay for it. Yeah. I'm a cheap skate. Mm -hmm. Then it is open then you can it has a GitHub thing, and I'm pretty sure it's just the, I don't know if you need to build anything. So. You can see how a lot of these edge loops are pretty good, um, but they maintain a lot of detail. Um, and how did I do that? Uh, it's a couple of things. So we've talked about retopology in the past at Seabug. Here I have this nice dense mesh that I sculpted. Uh, the way I sculpted it was just using, in sculpt mode, turning on dynamic topology. So, yeah. I'm actually gonna, I'm actually gonna show you on a cube really fast. So if I have a cube, let me turn on dynamic, and you get the only thing here. In sculpt mode, if I turn on dynamic topology, what it does is, based on my settings for the dynamic topology, I'm going to set up down to like 8 pixels. Number lock. Uh, based on your level of detail, the smaller the pixels, uh, the uh, more it's going to divide it. And it's also relative to your viewport. Yeah, it's, it's relative to your viewport. So the well, more you zoom in. It can be. Yeah. There's also a um, <coughs> constant detail. There's a way to like set it to perspective. Is what version of Lambda is this? 2.71. Okay, then should have But so my favorite brush is uh, the polish brush. No, it's not. I have not used it yet. It's, uh, I thought yours was to be uh, No, no, it's, it's not scrapes polish. peaks, which yeah. is shift six. And then what you do is you set it to a very hard curve. Yeah, you can see I already got this. Now, I can very quickly sort of have that chisel look. This is even better with the tablet. Um, so that's basically the idea behind di dynamic topology. As I paint, I get the exact detail. I don't have to worry about uh, 
mesh flow at this point. I I can just go crazy and have fun. Why isn't this view a mirror? What, I have X mirror turned on. Well, you have mirror on the X. Yeah. So if I turn that off, um, yeah, no, it doesn't. The X is relative to your view because it's doing everything. No, it's um basically yeah wherever. So it's okay. So yeah. So I turned it off now. If I do it over here. Whatever happens on this side happens on that side. I think you can um, like m try to mirror one side to the other, can't you? Yeah. Yeah, you can also use the symmetrize yeah. button, and it'll try and figure it out. Very useful for fixing mistakes you made while you have it turned off. Yeah. And you can press off the too, and make it work better. You can make an entire art style out of that. Yeah. So anyway, let's say you do that. So that's step one. And then step two is alien head. Good job. Good sculpting. Um, now the question is, uh, how do I turn this mesh, which has like a million faces, and is quite unusable, into something that is useful? And the way you do that is with dynamic topology. So I'm going to create a plane. Let's get all these verts down to zero. Remove doubles. So I have one vert, right? With Control Shift Tab, I can change my snap elements. I'm going to change it to face, and uh, make sure that you have individual elements turned on. Project individual elements onto the surface. So now, I'm actually going to turn this on permanently. So now when I go like this. I can start to say, let's like let's do an eyeball. Are those eye sockets? Yeah. Although, you know, in HR Geiger esque fashion, uh, for my inspiration I was going with like a crowning baby. Oh. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Wasn't there like a three year old man that recently was So, anyways, that's really slow. We should use B strip or B surfaces instead. How do we do that? First off, we turn on the add on. So, we go into your add on, we turn on B surfaces. And this lets us use grease pencil to generate surfaces really, really fast. If you're not familiar with Grease Pencil, um, whenever you hold D, you go into Grease Pencil mode. So I'm holding D and then drawing with left click. And I am now holding D and drawing with right click for a race. You can see the Grease Pencil settings over here, and we want to change one thing, which is we want it to be on the surface. So now, as I draw this, it's putting the stroke right on the mesh. Pretty cool, right? Yep. So now we can start modeling very, very fast by going stroke, 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 stroke. There's a way that you can draw straight lines, but I don't like doing that for B surfaces purposes because the straight line will essentially uh, think of it as um, two vector points. And so as a result, if you're drawing on the surface, it's not going to follow along this curve. Which you want, yeah. yeah. So now if I hit Add Surface, B surfaces will generate this mesh. I can change how many crosses there are. Let's say I, and how many follows there are. I think we need more of those. Oh, I typed it. Turn on second. A little bit like that, maybe. And now the last step is that all the interpolated verts that you just made are not actually snapped yet. So I'm going to hit L to grab all these linked verts, and hit G, and then it snaps it. So now these are all right on there. When I'm using B surfaces and I'm like going hardcore into Retopo, I will actually right click, add a shortcut, uh, Control Shift B. So now, 
So now I can uh, model really fast by saying, we, we. You'll notice that I'm always drawing from the same point and then down. So I always start at the top, go to the bottom, or start at the bottom, go to the top. Did you double that resultant twist? What a twist. Um, yes. And then I grab him. And then I go snap. I'm not going to worry about how these connect up yet. I'm just going to draw as many surfaces as I can. And eventually, there's not going to be any surfaces left. And I can start filling them in. So here's another example. We. I know I'm going to want something like this, right? Following these little bumps. So that's a good area for me to do something like that. How do you get such nice creases? Uh, pinch. A lot of pinching. Control Shift B with the secret hotkey I added. Oh no, I'll turn it over by then. Don't do that. Do all your strokes have to be parallel to each other, or can you also define the. Uh, um, you can do stuff that's uh, more complex. Or does it not help? Um, you can do something like, uh, like, let's try doing these eyes. So I can go, I can get this to basically curve all the way around. And here I might not want to have that stroke because I might want this to be a new series of faces coming down. Sure. I mean, yeah. The only way to get good at modeling is to model. So. Yep. Yeah. I thought it was the right book about modeling. Well, there's that too. And then never touch computer. So will this work? So Let's see. Yeah. What does it define as the last one in the thing? Can it make loops? Uh, you can type, you can turn on cyclic, and now it will connect that. Oh, cool. Cyclic. Pronounce cyclic. Cyclic is how you get a bull off. Yeah, so. Like, it's not mirrored, but this is where he's going and at. A mirror modifier. Mirror. And then I'm using the slash key on the number pad to occasionally go in and check my work. Neat. We're starting to see this uh, come to fruition. So the slash key isolates the selection and only shows that. Way. Yeah. So you're hiding that. Yeah. Um, it's a very common thing that ruins Blender experiences for newcomers <laughs> because they hit it by accident. They're like, where did everything go? <laughs> Where's my layers? I can't say what layer I was on. So let's, I want to show a specific example. Let's go like that. You have to be in edit mode. Let's go like that. Uh, control should be. Let's say I have this, this over here. I know that wasn't the right setting. It's way too wide there. But now let's say we have something very similar. How many did I draw? Did I draw? Mm -hmm. No, it's right now. Um, and then I have this, right? So now you have the conundrum of, all right, you have all these chunks that you modeled. How do you start sticking them together? That is where F2 comes in. Some of F2's functionality has been added to the default, but F2 is still generally the, the gold standard for modeling. Uh, it's an add-on, you turn it on. And now the F hotkey is a lot more powerful. So I can just hit F and it's going to fill these in for me. 
Oh, you just tap it. Because that's what happens if you press and hold. You get edges going up the wrong side. So, just those two tools, uh, B surfaces and F2, can really get you very, very far in retopologizing your model. Um, and then eventually, F2 and B surfaces. So, if you search F2, it pops up. And then if you search surface, B surfaces will come up. Mm -hmm. And now that you kind of understand that, take a look at the finished model again. So I've got nice edge flows, even going along stuff like that vein that's over here. So like this vein, I even have something for that. And the neck, you can see I was able to get a lot of those like Komodo dragon style skin wrinkles in there. Um, normally you would, if you were modeling by hand rather than retopologizing, um, you would never have this kind of level of detail because it would just frustrate you to model. Um, but it was actually really relatively easy. I would just, on this guy, uh, uh oh, I'm going to edit mode on him. So on this guy, all I would do for these would be like one, two, three, four. I would generate, and I'd go one, two, three, four, five. Generate, I would do it down here. And that would get the whole thing, and then I would just hand edit this weird place that they're connected. Um, but their individual you know, cylindrical amounts were very easy to do. So that is how to retopologize. I would also like to talk about UV unwrapping, especially if anyone here is an expert and you want to give me some feedback. So my thoughts on this are that uh, I want this to be multiple textures, or like I don't want one giant material for, for the whole character. Um, I want to have uh, a 1024 texture for just the head, a 1024 texture for the body, or you know, a series of them, normals, what have you. Um, and I think the eyeballs and the teeth and stuff would be part of the head model. And then um, each individual accessory, so like these pauldrons would have one, uh, would be like 512 textures. Um, all this stuff might be one 512 texture. And so, and then also these are going to be just the individual parts of it that are wrapping around. So these are using uh, a modifier stack set up to work on curves. So these are just, um, if you look at this mesh, uh, it has something that makes it follow this array. So first off, it has an array that is fit to a curve, which is that curve that I made. And that curve is actually generated off of this model. I basically selected, um, or I created edges snapped to this, or along this geometry and then converted it to a curve so that I knew it would fit the geometry to start with. And then you have it applied to a curve and then you mirror it. Pretty simple. So now I'm getting into the conundrum of uh, unwrapping this and texturing him. If you look at his unwrap, here's what I have so far. My idea here is that this, this body mesh is actually divided into two main things, which is these plates, uh, varying things, flexible or less flexible. And those are the main thing that you see when you look at this guy. And um, 
they should have a lot of texture space divert, uh, devoted to them. And then you have the opposite, which is all this junk in between it, which is all the like seam. And so my theory is that um, for the unwraps, I want all of these to be in relatively large, accurate placement. So if I select this group and invert it, you can see what I got going on here. I'll unpin them so you can see it a little better. So each of these are unwrapped um, to fit and then sort of placed. I made the, this unwrap actually quite fast. The way I did it was just unwrapping them. So I had all the seams selected. You can see it's a big mess. Oh wait, actually, that's not what I did. So first off, it was a mirror modifier, so I This is a modeling thing that I have, just an ongoing pet peeve. Ooh, I gotta fix it on him. Which is, I always like the seam along the center line to be selectable as one poly strip or one edge loop. And I have a triangle here that's breaking that. Only could fix that really easily. Yeah, I know. But now that's something I gotta do. So if I have a mirror modifier on this, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that group again and invert it. So I have all the inner stuff on a group and then I invert it. All these, I'm going to unwrap and sort of manually try and get on one side of this UV grid. So basically, blue, dark blue, purple, and red is where I want them. One of the first things I'm going to do is average island scale. Or like, let's say, I think I actually did the opposite. Um, if you had unwrapped all these individually, which I think I did do because on certain things, like the fingers, I was trying to find the exact thing. Average island scale will do nothing. Oh, there it goes. It'll make it so all these islands of faces are equivalent sizes in terms of the texture space. So now it's going to say that if this is, you know, seven inches or whatever, then this is seven inches, as for this is unwrapped. Now I can say pack island, and the one problem is uh, we actually want all this on one half of it. So I might scale the whole thing down 66%. Move that over there, and then start filling in this other junk area. Whee. And now I'm trying to not scale it because I want all these to be pretty accurate in texture size. I'm gonna rotate this one. Move all these little joints up there. And lastly, these guys up here. Now, on my mirror modifier, I'm going to turn on textures for you. And if I apply this, you're going to have a perfectly mirrored mesh. This is especially helpful if you like, you have if you do have a seam here. We don't have any seams that are like that because this guy is, for the most part, the same. I guess this. So like this one, you might have, uh, like this might be a seam where you wanted to, um, before the mirror modifier, do something like, you know, over here, 
and and specifically get this row of verts onto that exact pixel. And then when you apply the mirror modifier, you can paint on this object as if it's one texture. Um, but most of these are separate. Like, they never touch on this area, except it's just this back area and his butt. Um, so that would be the one place it's that I would pick up. Not the cod piece. Oh, yeah, the cod piece. So like those ones I would make aligned to the center. But for the most part, no. Yeah. Try to make the cod piece more pointy. Copy. It was pointy, and everyone said it was weird. <laughs> but now the problem you can see. Is staring at his cod piece. Now you can see that he's off balance, because he used to have like this cod piece that was like up here. And that looks balanced, but now it looks like he's going to fall over, right? So I got to adjust that. But I'm trying to be good about taking crits. So the reason you mirror this is because otherwise, um, you know, a lot of things you can mirror, like your diffuse textures and stuff, but normals you can't. They get really sad. So just undo it. Um, and then lastly, this is where I'm not sure what I want to do with these. I think these I don't even want to have as UVs. I think they're going to end up just being a procedural material that's like dark velvet. You know what I mean? Um, so that's where I'm at right now. I've also unwrapped the head. Um, and here's an example of where I did that thing I talked about. So I made sure that before I mirrored it, these and these were directly on the center line so that if I paint it on it, so if I paint on it like that, I don't have like the brush here and it's jumping over there. So that's where this project's at. Uh, I'm working on it still. You'll have to sit through it again next debug, I'm sure. Uh, but yeah, that's what I have. Uh, Cool stuff. Any questions?